Good morning, everybody. It's well, it's morning where I am. Uh, 11 11 actually Eastern time in, near Detroit, Michigan. And uh, it's Nick Meter. I'm going live on the BS Free Spirituality page for part two in this uh, week long series that I'm calling Let's Talk Values. It's uh, basically throughout this year, I had a couple of formative experiences where, where I got to go through exercises that, uh, that identify uh, what values are important to me and and then and then shape that into what I'm what I'm or, or help help sh take that and help shape what I'm bringing to the world what I'm sharing to the world because when we are more in tune with our values uh, then decisions become easier especially I think with with a creative project or with with a work project that has to do with with something that we're sharing offering to other people that could help them uh, if the values are clear then it helps them understand where where everything's coming from. Because, for instance, the term, the title BS Free Spirituality could actually mean uh, a lot of different things. <laughs> you know, it, it could mean any, it, a lot of people have already started reading into that, that it, that it means something about, uh, people think it means um, that I'm pointing fingers at, at people for, uh, for any number of things. That, that what, really what it comes down to me is I'm not saying that, that my way is the only way or, or that my, my approach to spirituality is, is the right approach. What I'm getting at is that uh, whoever the I is speaking, whatever my truth is, is what's right for me. And, and same for other people. Uh, it's up to them to decide what's right for them. Uh, as long as people are, so, so in my work, I give people the chance to, uh, to, to, find, to find that, to find their truth, to, to connect with their, their inner guide. And, and, uh, and, if, and if they encounter any pressure from anyone to take on a, a philosophy or, or if, any, if they encounter any shoulds, like they should be uh, exploring spirituality a certain way, then that's when I would call bullshit. So spirituality also has uh, different meanings. I think that quite often it can be assumed to have to do with metaphysical exploration, with having mystical experiences. And that's that can certainly be a component of of spiritual of spiritual practice. I think that's throughout throughout history. That's that's certainly been a component. However, it's possible to go really really far in that direction, and and for that to start to seem like the point, which I definitely experienced uh, earlier in my life when I started to explore spirituality and spiritual practices, I became really fixated on on having deep meditative experiences with with having really just like getting really out there through through meditation and and, and other ways and and to the point where i became very disconnected with with this with this shared world that we're all in that we're living in together and so so i think it's important to to in other words to to, to keep our connection to keep some groundedness to be able to, uh, if we have a deep, far out experience, to be able to come back and put it into language that 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 other people could understand, even if they haven't necessarily had that experience, because e each of us uh, can never entirely know what what someone else has gone through, what what their internal experience is, but but to be able to to start to communicate more in language that uh, that anyone could understand. And then also to to be able to put into words what we're going to do now, because I think having mystical experiences for the sake of mystical experiences uh, seems kind of silly to me. What what seems uh, so? So there's this other aspect of spirituality that 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 I want to bring more attention to. That's that's what I am feeling really passionate about right now, of of tapping into our purpose and the meaning of our life, having having a sense of we of uh, of what, yeah, what what we're doing here? Whether whether I mean, some people believe that that as individuals we chose to came we chose to come into uh, this reality, like chose to to be born. Which I I, <laughs> I can't answer that that question. I'm not going to tell anyone they're wrong who who believes that. But um, but regardless of how we got here, uh, we're all all of us who are alive now uh, could could benefit from from having a clearer sense of of how how we can make 
our lives meaningful? What what's in our power to, um, yeah, to 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 change or to enact? What actions can we take that can can bring meaning and purpose and fulfillment to our day to day lives? And I think also having a sense of the big scope of of our life story, being able to look back at at the at different times in the past and to find meaning there, and also then to to imagine forward with goals and, and visions that 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 reflect our values that we're identified with in the in the present time that have some sense of continuation with everything else that has gone come or that has come before, and then also to have some flexibility to to keep in mind that that there's always going to be some unpredictability uh, that that each step we're taking is in some sense into the unknown into unpredictability. I'm just checking in with the technical side because my sc <laughs> my, my screen, uh, hey Aaron, my screen, or Phoenix, I mean, my, my screen looks different than it did yesterday and I was hoping to share this video in a couple of different places. I, I'm remembering how I did it now. So I'm going to pause just for a second to share this live video on my personal wall and in my group. So uh, if um, yeah, I'll pause. I'll, I'll continue in a second. <laughs> Need some elevator music <laughs> while I do this. Hopefully this video is not too glitchy on the on the watching end. Sometimes it looks I mean it always looks totally clear to me while I'm filming and then sometimes after the fact I go and see it and there's all these crazy glitches. So Facebook is apparently working out some some kinks in their system. But this is a pretty cool way to be able to just pop on and, and share some thoughts. And, uh, and also whoever might be joining, if you've got any questions or comments uh, about today's topic, feel free to, to pipe in. Basically, I want to talk a bit about the importance of determination. Yesterday, uh, I shared about the first of the core values behind BS Free Spirituality that is uh, self-responsibility. And I also talked about uh, radical self-reliance. That's another way to put that one. Uh, if you're familiar with the Burning Man principles, but but I like that the, the uh, radic or sorry, I like I like self responsibility even more for for this for for this focus and in, in in other words, uh, yeah, taking responsibility for for our own well being, our own holistic well being, instead of expecting other people to to give us what we need. Uh, and so so then part two, and and I do consider these these these. Uh, these five values to have something of a of a sense of a journey to them. So so starting from self responsibility, then there's something that comes in next for me about determination. So uh, to me, oh, and I did mention in the in the first video the idea or an affirmation that I've used that uh, I can handle anything that life puts in my path. To me, that really gets at the the essence of what I mean about determination. So it has to do with uh, facing fears of, of identifying the things that that scare us and then leaning into those fears or, or or fully facing challenges that appear in life instead of instead of trying to numb ourselves from them or or numb ourselves to them or, or hide or avoid them but instead leaning into those fears and challenges and with the with the uh, faith I guess you could say that 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 will bring uh, greater rewards than if we were to avoid them and and also to especially put our energy into facing fears that our intuition can tell will bring us to the next step in our in our path of of transformation bring us into more empowerment or fulfillment because well I'll come back to that in a second I want to touch on the key points about determination first uh, basically lasting change doesn't come in an instant to me, that's why we call 
these things a practice, like a, a spiritual practice, uh, yoga, or whether it's yoga, something on the more embodied side, uh, or if, or even um, tracking and, and making changes to the way that our thought patterns happen on a day-to-day -day basis, I, I consider that a practice too, because it, because it's not something that that can change, not something that will necessarily change in an instant. Time is, is usually a factor. And with, with any big, uh, with any attempt for, for large scale lasting change, I, I think we'll get out of it what we put into it. In other words, uh, there's, an, there's an aspect of investment and return in a, in a way. Uh, so not expecting what we really want and crave and need to just fall into our lap, but to uh, but to have the determination to, to go after it, to keep going, to stay committed, to keep in mind that, that if we actually do the work that, that is our specific work that's unique to, to us and, and our needs and our, our process, that, that there will be a reward that comes from it. So uh, just to put this in the scope of where things are coming ahead, uh, the next three values that I'll go through the next few days are exploration, purpose, and expression. So maybe you can already kind of imagine uh, how, how determination fits into this, uh, what I see as, as a journey from, uh, from feeling like something's off or missing or like our needs are not met or our desires are not fulfilled to, to, uh, th to going through the journey to to feeling more in touch with our purpose and our power and our voice and feeling more fluidity to, to make the changes that we need to take, uh, to take the responsibility to, to feel better, to, 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 to feel like, uh, like we're on solid ground, standing firmly in who we are as an individual in our identity. And so to me, uh, uh, determination plays, plays a huge role. And I think that it's under, uh, it's, either undervalued or it's not talked about enough in the context of, of spiritual development and, and specifically in that, in that sense of spirituality that has more to do with the, the journey and, and uh, finding meaning in life uh, because it, it really doesn't necessarily take a lot of determination to have a mystical experience. I mean, possibly if somebody is really, really dedicated to, uh, to exploring some specific uh, like transcendental meditation practice, and if they find uh, value, if they find that rewarding, that's that's fine. But um, at least in my work, what I'm offering with my my coaching and and my workshops, uh, anyone's welcome to have whatever experience they have. But but in in the longer scale, going from, for instance, a three hour cacao ceremony where somebody could get some insight into a situation that they're dealing with in their life. Uh, they, they might identify some sense of, of what's missing and then also get some, not only some clue of what to change or what next step to make, but also the, uh, but quite often I think they, they could find the motivation and, and the focus to actually start to take steps uh, in, in that new direction. So th here's how I think quite often it could it could happen that our first attempts to make a change might not go how we expect, or maybe, maybe in, in you know, in that initial workshop, uh, it, it might have just seemed a little bit oversimplified. And and like I said in the first video, we kind of live in a fast food culture where we want things now, 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 and <clears throat> and not everything is like that. And I think that uh, the thing about this this determination topic is that in our mind, we might get caught up in, oh, it's going to take so long, it's going to take a lot of work, and, and we use that word, work, like, uh, about, about self-development or, 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 or spiritual practice. So, so on the one hand, yeah, there is something that we are doing that takes some structure and, and some, some commitment, but, but even calling it uh, doing, or even saying that we have to do the work, or we have to, you know, like catching those little, those little have tos and shoulds and need tos, uh, and eliminating eliminating those from our language when it comes to self development can can even in itself uh, create some spaciousness because because we want to keep in mind that that the goal here is to be more comfortable in our own skin to be more comfortable with 
with with who we really are, our most authentic selves. And and at least for me, and I think I, I think for a lot of people, and, and this is the focus in in my work for sure, is to create the space for people to yeah, to be able to flow, to try different things, to 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 mix different different tools and practices together. Uh, to to be able to yeah shift along with life because life is changing all the time and and uh, however so so determination uh, well yeah since we're on the topic of or since I'm on the topic of uh, workshops I did want to uh, put this in the context of some of the kind of practices that I lead in workshops very often one is uh, well I guess the one like one one area of 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 practices that I lead, I would call active meditations. I work a lot with with Osho uh, Osho active meditations that that I've trained with my, my teacher Gaia Ma actually. And uh, so so these are pretty. When 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 most people think of meditation, they probably think of mindfulness style practice where somebody's sitting cross legged, uh, eyes closed, focusing on the breath, trying to. Well, they might not think of it in these terms, but there is some intention to eliminate thought or or at least to come to a place of of quieter mind and inner peace and This kind of practice helped me for about two months when I first tried meditation but but overall, I would actually get into more of a place of anxiety or or stress or or the repetitive unhelpful thought patterns would just sort of take over. So to me, then, then years later, I found this idea of active meditation that, that brings in uh, more movement, more, more uh, active breathing. And, and so, so, so Osho, if you're not familiar with Osho, he was, uh, um, I don't actually know that much about Osho philosophy. I, I know mostly about the practices that he was involved in developing very, but he was a self-development guru or whatever uh controversial figure i i i can't vouch for his lifestyle or anything like that uh, but but these active meditations that he developed are actually very powerful ways to uh to create a shift in the nervous system in in the <laughs> thanks phoenix for uh yeah for sharing your thoughts about this yeah phoenix says they they're amazingly effective rejuvenating experiences and yet, when I first when I first tried some of these, uh, they kind of freaked me out because they because they are more active because because they get really deep into I think even like cellular uh, memory or muscle memory they get really deep into the nervous system and into the into the weight that we've taken on from expectations of of others they get into uh, the way that cultural conditioning lives in our body how how those uh, negative beliefs about ourselves and about life live in our body and and also the way that trauma and scary experiences uh, whether it was an actual uh, instance of violence or abuse or just day to day as humans we go through situations that that in our mind might seem just like a little thing but on some level in our body it we we are all experiencing what could be called trauma where where some part of some way, in some way the body registers it as a scary or threatening situation. And over time, these things uh, accumulate and lead to mysterious pains or symptoms or illnesses or depression or anxiety. All, all of these kind of things can happen or it can just interfere with our, our being able to connect with people to find fulfilling connection. It can uh, also uh, lead to us just, just yeah, the, 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 the feeling of just, the feeling like something's just off or, or missing. So, so this is why these active meditations are, are a very, a, are a very big part of what I do. And, and I like starting on the body level, giving the mind a little vacation basically, but, uh, and then going back into the, the mental stuff. Once there's been that cleansing for the nervous system to then go into uh, creating new thought patterns or new communication practices. But, uh, so, so the thing about, uh, I was going to talk about one specific active meditation to illustrate a point about determination and the importance of that, because uh, in one 
active meditation called the chakra breathing that, that some of you watching may have done with me before. It's a standing breath work. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty intense practice. It's, it's similar breathing to holotropic breath work, if you've heard of that or, or ever tried that. It, it's deep, rapid breaths in and out through an open mouth. So, so the idea is to get a lot more oxygen into the body than, than we're used to, and it can, it, can pre, it can create some intense sensations ranging from lightheadedness to just feeling like energy is flushing and, and flowing throughout the body to uh, also some tension might arise in the fingers or around the, the mouth, uh, almost a feeling. And, and then that in itself can be a little bit scary the first time it, it happened, or the first time it happens. My teacher explains it like, like it's the body's way of, of processing all the extra oxygen that's coming in during the breath work. And, and that it's probably a good thing in the big picture because it could be the body's way of, of releasing stuff that the energy energy that doesn't need to to be there anymore and and like i was saying that that physical or nervous system aspect can connect to the experiences that we have had whether recently or long ago so the thing about the chakra breathing practice is it comes in three rounds of 15 minutes each round where the where you're imagining sending the breath into the different chakras which if you're not familiar you can just imagine sending the breath into different parts of the body ranging from the pelvis up to the crown of the head and so first especially if somebody's never done this before the, they, they'll get to the end of the first round and and feel kind of flustered and maybe lightheaded and and some it's common for people to 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 try to kneel down or lay down because because essentially there's a symbolic parallel in this kind of experience to when we're in our day-to-day -day life and something happens or, or we come up into a challenging situation or we, we encounter some, some problem, some puzzle that we can't immediately find a, a, a way forward through or, or that tests our, uh, our, our, our stamina. <laughs> in other words, when we get to the end of that first round in the breath work, then, then people, ca people do get a chance to rest, but then I come in as facilitator and say, okay, now we're going to prepare for the second round. So let's get back into our starting standing position, you know, find, find that rootedness standing uh, sturdy because when we're in a sacred space like that, when we're in, a, when we're in a, an experience like that, even body posture and positioning can play a huge role. So, so for us to stand up in that practice and and to and to continue to go into the second round to face whatever fears arose in the first round uh whether physical or emotional or thoughts that came up this is a determination practice and i and i always try to say uh that we get we we get what we put into it or or even sometimes more i think but but the point is that that to stay committed to stay determined to, to trust that the body knows what it's doing, to, to trust that the, even just taking in this extra amount of oxygen could be good for us. Then by the time we get to the end of the second round, we've, we've, uh, we've faced those fears head on and we start to really reap the benefits and we get to the third round. And to me, that's like, like a, a closing of the loop. And this actually reminds me of another aspect of, of determination I wanna talk about before signing off, I'm just going to take a drink of water. So the thing about uh, a, a, an active meditation practice like that, uh, there are actually some parallels in a, in a physical embodied practice like that to world mythology, surprisingly, <laughs> or maybe, maybe you already knew this, but uh, in in, a, in this kind of holistic transformational workshop design, at least the way that the way that I like to think about it, the way that my teacher Gaia Ma uh, uh, suggested that I think about it, is to to take people on a journey, uh, but specifically to have a sense of a of an arc to the journey. So we're coming in on our ordinary level, and then we can either think about going up to an, a, a peak of intensity or going down into the symbolic underworld into our subconscious. And then at the end, we want to come back out basically 
on level ground back in, uh, in ordinary reality and be able to integrate whatever we experience into, into common language, into, into ideas for, yeah, the ideas for, for what changes we might be able to make in our life to, to create more, more fulfillment and, and bliss and joy in our lives. So, uh, so this, this, so the, the, the value of determination to me also, also relates to this idea of the journey or the quest because it can come in in a, in a one hour meditation like that. And it can also, uh, even more importantly, I think, relate to, to our, our, uh, to our whole life, to the big picture. Uh, cause, cause then when we, in other words, when, when I lead a, a, a breathwork practice like that, I also call it spiritual warrior training in a way. And, and another one of my teachers, uh, I'm really appreciative for putting it in those terms when we, uh, when we, when we go through a somewhat challenging spiritual practice that, that our intuition tells us is right for us, because this, this is uh, an important thing to distinguish that just doing scary stuff, whether it's in a spiritual context or out in the world, just doing something scary doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to benefit from it or gain from it. Uh, I think, you know, for instance, we could walk out into, into busy traffic. That'll be scary, but, but is that going to, to put us more in touch with our empowerment? Probably not. Uh, I think checking in with our core and, and our intuition when we're deciding which fears to face at which times is really important. And I think about it in the sense of a, of a therapeutic edge. Each of us has an edge to our identity, what seems possible for us right now. And, and so there are ways to gently, safely go up against that edge to kind of dance with it, negotiate with it, and not just plow through it. Because if, if, <laughs> because if we do that, and it doesn't go well, then we can actually recreate trauma for ourselves and just put us further back on our process, put us further out of touch with, with empowerment and liberation. But to, so this is getting back to the, the idea of the quest or the journey in, in uh, if you're not familiar with, with world mythology or the work of Joseph Campbell, uh, that was actually very formative in my own path when I started to, when I started to explore spirituality, when I was going through what I would call a, a spiritual awakening, an awakening to, to, to the search for, for what is the purpose of my life. Uh, I was reading a lot of Joseph Campbell's work and he found that when he went through uh, the history or the, the record of, of world mythology, he found this common thread, well, yeah, he called it the monomyth. So there were certain, I, I'm not going to go through the whole, <laughs> the whole monomyth right now, but there were certain parallels that showed up at, where, where there was usually a character who started out in the home zone, in the comfort zone, basically, in the place where they had grown up, in, in that realm of, of the cultural norms and mores and the usual expectations for people in that, in that social group or society. And, and yet uh, all of, so in, in world mythology very frequently, and this shows up in movies all the time, if you just pay attention to like any Disney movie, Moana was a recent, a, a recent one, uh, and Coco, I just saw Coco, that's a similar one. So there's a, there's a call to go outside of the, of the comfort zone that this character receives, and, and then they encounter all sorts of barriers, either figures in their life or, or circumstances of nature, or, you know, whatever in mythology, it could be anything. It could be, it could be uh, disembodied spirits or whatever they encounter. But the point is that they, they come up against barriers to, to breaking out of the comfort zone. So these are like the, the, I think of these in that, in that sense of the edge, the edge of what seems possible for us. Cause we might encounter those kind of barriers around us and the people from the people in our lives uh, telling us, what they expect of us or what their beliefs about life are. But a lot of times it's actually something going on inside of us. And maybe, maybe it had something to do with the distant past with those actual people, but it's possible. And I've experienced this in my own path that uh, that's, and, and this is the idea of projection, basically. It, there are times when I experience uh, that somebody is getting in my way or limiting me somehow when it actually is a voice inside of me it's a part of me that doesn't believe that I can take that next step into my own empowerment or liberation. And, and then I project it 
onto them or I blame them for my own disempowerment or limitation. So this is something to, to be aware of that it can be both an actual, an actual external barrier. And then these things also live inside of us. And, and through, through my coaching and workshops, I, I, I do uh, guide people through negotiating both of those areas. But, but, but I think that the internal barriers and the projection aspect is actually uh, a, 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 a bigger thing than, than we <laughs> realize. And, and I think focusing on that can then influence how we navigate and negotiate with, with some of the external barriers that, that we encounter, which could include just not even engaging. For instance, if, we are, if we're dealing with a person in our life who, who seems to be, who we have the sense that we need to like convince them that our way is legitimate or, or that, yeah, or that we are right or that they should respect our, our way of seeing things, our way of perceiving things. Uh, I think this is actually a symptom of the social media age when we all have like hundreds of thousands of people uh, sending their communications our way and we all have this impression that, uh, yeah, we're, I mean, we have Facebook friends even if we haven't necessarily met them in person. Uh, so to me, this has to do with, with boundary work and, and assertiveness. And if, if we are really in touch with our purpose and our truth, it, it, it can be possible and sometimes better to, to just fully be in that, to fully honor ourselves without having to convince every single person that we encounter that that is, that, that there's something true or right about that. Because all of us have our different perceptions, our different truth. And so in other words, on, on this path, on this quest, when we, when we encounter trials or, or, or figures or voices that seem like, uh, like they're blocking us from our next step, sometimes the, the best and most uh, sustainable energetically, <laughs> energetically sustainable option will be to just, to just take our leave, to, to not even interact with with a person. If it's a voice inside, then that's a little bit trickier because it's riding around with us wherever we go. But, uh, but for instance, in, in a workshop, it's possible to set up a scenario where, where someone who's experiencing some critical inner voice, there could be, uh, as facilitator, I could cast someone else in the room to stand in, in that role. And, and, and so then the person who's experiencing the inner critical voice can, can really feel uh, what it's like to have that that voice represented, uh, symbolized by by another actual person, and then the idea is to give the the body a chance to complete something that was left incomplete in the past. So so sometimes it's not to, sometimes it's not even the most beneficial to have a conversation with that critical voice. Sometimes, and I've experienced this. Sometimes it's more. Uh, productive and more transformational to have a physical experience with that with that figure holding the space of the critical voice so in other words uh, to, to like wrestle a little bit or to to push up against them to feel to feel our power in in our body I, I think uh, that's something that can only really be experienced I, I mean hopefully you hear my excitement about it but uh, but yeah this is this is part of what I feel really passionate about is creating as I say, creating direct experiences for people to have a holistic transformational, uh, I'm repeating my, I'm repeating the word experience a lot, but yeah, for the, for there to be a flowing and a back and forth between the mind and body, uh, it's really cutting edge stuff. And, and I'm, and I'm, uh, integrating a lot of different practices and systems together in, in what I do. So if you haven't been to one of my workshops and, uh, Feel free to reach out for more info. I'm going to wrap up here in this in this video in a second, but uh, I'm also I just announced the details for a retreat in March that I'm hosting in Thailand. So I'll put the link in the comments for this. But uh, whoa, yeah. So March 17th to 24th, I'm ho hosting a, a week long retreat on Koh Phangan, Thailand. And so that'll be seven days to be able to, you know, go through this kind of journey go through the embodied work and, and also the, the more mental, uh, psychological communication kind of work and, and for there to be play too, for it to not be super, super structured and, and expect everyone to go through the, 
uh, you know, the, the shoot that I think that they should go through, but to, to have some structure and also the flexibility for people to explore and find what really works for them. I'm also uh, going to be unveiling new coaching packages in the next uh, week or two. So stay tuned for that. If you're not on, well, if you, if you're not yet on my email uh, newsletter, I'll put the link to so the second link that I just posted is uh, where to sign up to get email reminders for this video series that I'm doing all week the next uh, three days at 11 a.m. Eastern I'll be uh, posting more I'll be sharing more of these videos and and then if you're on my email newsletter then you also get information about about the coaching packages that I unveil uh, uh, other, I'm going to plan other shorter retreats, a weekend retreat in California in the winter and a weekend retreat in Colorado in the spring. And some online courses, some, some, uh, some digital ebook kind of guide things. So a lot of exciting things coming. I'm feeling very determined myself to keep, to keep going, to keep pressing, you know, gently pressing the edge of what's possible for, for me. And I'm excited to keep sharing that with all of you. So thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. See you soon.